the second part of this teaching we thank God for the first part and the deliverance that has come to you just by the understanding of the word just to take the right step and it will give you courage just know that are breaking oral relationship as the God they had in that first part they said the courage in the name of Jesus that is a message preached by my wife on breaking yoke of wrong relationship you can ask for it you can get the, the link to our telegram channel to her videos as well where you can watch the video now spiritual factors to breaking um, spiritual factors that causes marital delay of any form delay in getting married delay in getting engaged delay in getting career settlement that can give marital settlement delay in giving back to each other the first child or the second child and I should mention this. I think brothers need to know that working on their career is very important. More important than looking forward to get married to. Not just because of the person considering you for marriage, even for your future, for the care of your, fa of your family. And I always say jokingly that a brother, a sister, will say yes either to your present pocket or to your future pocket. And a sister sees you and propose to a, to a sister, she's going to assess you and be like, okay, he doesn't have money right now, but with the look of things, because he has the potential. If, I, if he continues like this, if he continues like that, is what every reasonable lady would do. So if I may that be materialistic or not, if, if, if he considers it, does it look like someone? When I said yes, to, when I proposed to my wife, <laughs> I was... I was earning 15,000 naira in a month. I was a missionary, and then all I plan to do is to be in the ministry of my life. And she knows. She knew. But one thing kept her going. She knew I'm, I'm a very hard working person. I just want to work. I just want to fulfill purpose. I just want to touch lives. There's no person who is hard at work, smart at work, that will make it eventually. And today, in fact, progressively over time, it has been from one stage of light to the other. So, brothers, you know, I've seen several brothers like that. They will come to me. I want to get engaged. I will tell them, please find you of age, but please work on your marital life. And they will come to me the following: I work on your career life, work on your career, career. And they will come to me the next day, and they will say. Sir, I saw the sister. Most times I tell them, go ahead and, pro and, pro and propose. You can go ahead. Why do I have to? Why do I tell them to go ahead? Because I don't want to be the one that will be like this person is supposed to marry. I discourage them. More often than not, they come and they say the sister said said no. At times I'm sincere. I tell them. I will tell them that even if, if even if I'm the lady, I will have said no. Because. You have not paid as the kind of person that will say yes to you. Ha. The kind of person that will say yes to you in this state. No, it's not about what you have. It's not about your pocket. No. But your future pocket, the way you are doing, you are handling your life. With the record they can see. You are not yet on the path. When you say you are traveling to Lagos, for instance, when you are at home, you are not yet in Lagos. When you are in the vehicle taking you to the park, you are not yet in Lagos. It is when you get to the vehicle, to the bus leading to Lagos, that you can boldly say, I am going to Lagos. That is when you need a partner. That's when you need a future partner. In fact, the tendency that you will just you will pick the wrong person when you are not yet on the way is higher than when you are on the way. I've counseled some young men that believe what I said, follow what I've said. And the person they told me they wanted to go and propose to eventually they will come back and say, no, I'm not proposing to that person again. Because after some time, I've realized that this person is not going in my direction. But when you don't yet have a direction, you don't have your foot in your direction yet, you are just in a confused career state. And what you want to do is to get engaged. No real serious sister will say yes to you at that point. You are at the point where you should wait and be calm. And then focus on this area of your life. Not that you must be there, that you must be anything, you know. No. You may just be in, I told you I was in 15,000, but I already have a part. They say, from the standing in the name of Jesus and the power of God is killing whatever is making you to be confused and what is holding you to, into daily marriage, into receiving no other responses in the name of Jesus. 
Because as you begin to think step in the right direction, always begin to open for you immediately. So let's talk about spiritual factors. Number one is generational cost causes. Generational causes. It is built, it is a wide belief, especially this aspect of the world, that there could be generational cause in the family and that cause could be turning towards getting married late. You see four sisters in the house, or the four sisters starting 35, 40, they are not yet engaged, they are not yet married, they marry one have a, have a damaged home, and so on and so forth. And then you see that kind of, you see that cause, maybe they've told you, or maybe you've added, see. You, if if there is a bit at all, there is something called generational cause, which I believe there is. Where me and you may not align is our approach to 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 it. I believe there is, but my approach to it may differ from your own approach towards it. Now, generational cause exists on the wings of bloodline. It exists based on bloodline. It's because you belong to the family, to the generation. That is why the cause can at all even affect you. But what if you are doing more in that bloodline? That means it cannot affect you. You have an higher bloodline. And whoever is from the both is the both for that's what the Bible says. The higher bloodline is the blood of Jesus that has blotted your name, tipped your name, removed your name from that generation, from that family. And you are now in the family of Christ. You are now in a new family. And you are free from the cause of marital delay in the name of Jesus. You are free from delay conception in the name of Jesus. You are free from marital failure in the name of Jesus. You are free from death, untimely death in the name of the untimely death of spouse in the name of Jesus. You are free from being single to 40 to 35 for a long time in the name of Jesus. Why are you free? Not because you can pray. People will say, you must be able to break, you must be able to pray and break the, the internal cause of your family. Not because you can pray, but because you know that if that is in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away. And so on that platform, I declare you free. What affects others cannot affect me. Can you see that? What affects others, my family cannot affect me. As I say, he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, to the kingdom of light. And in this kingdom, there is no delay. In this kingdom, there is no time in death. In this kingdom, there is no miscarriage. Hallelujah. Say, I am free. He has not said, it's free indeed. He said, he has blotted every handwriting written against you. There's a family register where they write it, but it blots your own amount of it. If you attend the school and the student is absent, and the teacher is calling the register, if you call the name of the child, people will say absent. But when the child has left the school, President has left that school and they'll call the names. What, what would the class say? This class will say left. Left. They mention them, they will say left. Left. The next time there is a mention of your name, the response will be left. The response will be left. The next time the devil will go to check your family bloodline, the response will be left. You don't see the original cause inside the blood, is it? Do you see it inside? Or do you can't take blood today? They're not showing me someone right now. I see addiction to smoke. To smoke, maybe it's more than smoke, I've got thing. Receive strength, you are free right in the name of Jesus. And there's a father that smokes. There's a deliverance, and it's giving you sadness. You need to find joy first. You need to find joy first. Find joy, whether your father smokes or not. Find joy in Christ. And I pray with you, you are free. Your father is free from that bondage in the name of Jesus. His lungs are healed in the name of Jesus. Whether you are that person, whether it has to do with or not, or, 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 or not, every that has to do with the lungs, with the breathing, the name of Jesus that is in and right now in the name of Jesus. That is deliverance coming to you, your father, your family, your sibling, your spouse. In Jesus' name, receive help. Him. Now, you are free from that generational cause. You can't see generational cause. Every cause of untimely death, the death of spouse, the death of husband, the death of wife, the death of parents in your family, it shall not happen in your own life. 
it shall not happen. It shall not happen. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, you can't test the national cause inside the blood. It's a spiritual thing. Now, if you believe that there is a generational cause, but you find it hard to believe that there is a higher blood, which is the blood of Jesus, then there is a problem with you. There is a problem with your Christian life. There is a problem with your faith. You believe that a generational cause exists in your family, but you don't believe that there is an higher blood line that you have been engrafted into and has taken you away from this one, then there is a problem with you. Receive help in Jesus' name. You don't have to jump up to break generational curse. You just have to know that you no longer belong in that family and retain your faith and keep declaring it. Amen. Amen. You are free from every form of generational curse that your eyes have seen, that your ears have heard in your family any form or anyone related to marriage, to marital destiny, in the name of Jesus. Say, I am free from every form of cause, every form of generational cause that has to do with marital bondage. You can be specific, mention it, mention it, not giving birth on time, not getting married on time, not getting it right. I am free from it now, forever, in Jesus' name. Amen. The second spiritual factor is evil pattern. Evil pattern. It is also believed. It's also believe that when you see a pattern in the family and the pattern is not good, um, the pattern pattern in this case means that the father, or let's say, or for like in the case of Abraham, they have a child on time, Isaac they have a child on time, Richard Jacob, Jacob they have a child on time. It has become a pattern because it has repeated itself. And it is not a good one. It's not a cost in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's life, but it's a pattern that is not good. If you see any kind of that pattern in your life, in your family, in your lineage, say, my case is different. What affects others cannot affect me. This pattern of marrying it, this pattern of getting it drunk, cannot happen to me in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, there shall be no occasion to see this proverb in the strength that the father had the fruit and the mouth of the children were placed on hedge. There shall be no occasion for bystanders. There shall be no occasion for people, for passerby to say it about you in the name of Jesus. There shall be no occasion for them to say that is how it happened to his father, to his mother, to his sister concerning your life in the name of Jesus. We are approaching this thing not out of fear, but out of faith, and your victory is settled. Say it. Say there shall be no occasion to repeat this evil pattern in my life. Mention that evil pattern, and it is so, and it is unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. Number three, spiritual factor is affliction. This is when a person decided to afflict another person spiritually. The Bible says, it that cost me, the Lord will cost. Say it. It that cost me, the Lord will cost. That has cost me, the Lord has cost them, and their cost will have no impact in my life. Because the Bible says, Who said the thing? Who has said the thing? And it comes to pass. When the Lord has not spoken it, the Lord did not cost me. And so I am not under a cost. I am not under a spell. I am not under a marital delay in the name of Jesus. And I decree to you like any human being that has made himself a God. Or a powerful person and has committed itself to bring you down or to cause you or to demoralize you or to make sure that you don't have a close mental destiny, they are buried right now, they are destroyed right now. Whatever power or influence they think they have, they lose it now in the name of Jesus. You are standing on your feet, you are standing upright, and you are getting it right in the name of Jesus. Congratulations. That affliction shall not stand. The Bible says an undeserved cause will not land on its victim. It's not landing upon you. It's not landing upon you. Bible says Jesus has been made a cause for you. Thank you, Lord. 
because of course, anyone that's angered on the tree just has taken away your cause. You don't have to jump up to help that cause. Just say, Jesus, I've taken away the cause. And whoever cost me is cost back in the name of Jesus because I cannot be cost. There's no incantation against, jo- against Jacob. There is no there is no incantation, there's no spell against me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever trace of affliction that you have seen or you have seen so far ended right now in the name of Jesus. Now that spiritual factor is what they call spirit husband, spirit wife. People see that they have sex in the dream, they see that they have marriage, they see that they have children in the dream. Some may not even see anything. But somebody have told the people have been telling you that you have a spirit husband. Those husband are demons. And the Bible says, those demons, they say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, they know Jesus. And so in the name of Jesus, whichever demon that has put self in the position of spirit husband, working against your marital destiny, they are dead now. They are cast out now. They perish now. In the name of Jesus, I end their influence. I end their affliction. I end their activity in your life in Jesus' name. Please, please, and please, never believe that you have a spirit husband. Never believe that you have a spirit wife. Whatever you do not consent to, devil cannot force it upon you. Oh, they they took me to the river. (laughs) I was in the river section, and and the demon said, she's mine. She's mine. Deborah, she's from the river. She has my crown. I just said, hello. When do you become a creator? Where were you when God was making this girl? And that you are claiming her now. Where were you? The demon kept months. And I cast it out. This was the demon they've been chasing us for, for the past one hour. For the past one hour. I was in the river section with a mature woman. She said she's from the river. And that the demon said loud and clear, and said, so far she believed that she's from me. She can't be free from me. So far you believe that you have been covenanted. Jesus is your father. Who has an eye authority upon you? Your father, your spiritual father, your creator, all your parents. My parents covenanted me. So I have a spiritual husband. Pastor, please pray for me. That I will be free from my spiritual husband. So far you are claiming that spiritual husband. It remains yours for life. Go and be dealing with it. But when you are ready, see, it is not possible. It's a lie that the devil has sold to you. That is what the Lord has joined together, not what the devil has joined together. The Bible says, it that is in Christ is a new creature. It was the Bible joking. Does the Bible sound like a joke unto you? I was who has believed our reports? To whom has the arm of the Lord been made manifest? The Bible says, it that is from a book, from a book. The Bible says, we are seated far above. Oh, Pastor, I don't know all those scriptures. Do you believe? Do you believe what I'm saying? Do you agree? Then that's all you need. And you are free now. Say I am free. Say it is impossible for me to be exposed to a demon. And it cannot happen. And it's not happening. There's nothing like that. I deny it. I reject it. Why? Because he that is in Christ is a new creature. I'm a new creature. All things are passing away. When a person, when someone in US or UK or Germany adopts a child from Africa, do you deny it? Do you say it's not real? So when Jesus adopts you, he created you in the first place. So he now adopts you because we have once in and you doubt it. Then you have a mental, you are you are in a mental bondage. Get free now. And whatever physical faces you are seeing is nothing and is all gone in the name of Jesus. You are free indeed. The third is the third or fourth now. The fifth spiritual factor that keeps people in marital delay of any kind is holding on to past sins. Oh, I don't have a child because I have aborted. How many abortions did you do? You are in Christ. Your sins have been blotted out. Should I show people that do five abortions that still have a child? 
There are people who are married, they are still doing abortion. They will, mar- they will get pregnant, they will go and check, is it a male or female? If it is a female, they will abort it. And they will still take it again. And who is counting? Who is counting your sins? Your father has forgiven you. It is only you and the devil that is counting it. You, the devil, and your fake prophet, your fake pastor, or your, or your ignorant pastor that is counting your past sins. The Bible says, if your sins are swelled as Christ, they shall be as white as wood. If you are still keeping yourself in peace, then anybody can set you free. But if you free yourself from guilt, then you are free indeed. Yet, he said it, I, even I, I am he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sin. As I thought, I will not remember your sins. They don't ask me to tell someone this. The person you sin against is God. And God said, I don't even remember. <laughs> then you are free indeed in the name of Jesus. See, my old sins are all wiped out and passed away in the name of Jesus. They cannot affect me. They are not affecting me now and forever. Amen. Breaking out. How do you break out from generational causes? Number one, I've said it already, I'm just going to go through it, is your belief system. It's all about your belief. What do you believe? Do you believe that generational cause is affecting your marital destiny? Do you believe that evil pattern will repeat itself in your life? Do you believe that the affliction of one person's cause is affecting you? Do you believe that you have a spirit husband? Or a spirit why do you believe that you have been exposed to a goddess or a god? The Bible says it is unto you according to your faith. If you say I don't believe, then you don't believe. Then when you wake up tomorrow, you are entering your marital fulfillment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Who had believed our report? And to whom has the harm of the Lord been revealed? Causes are real, evil patterns are real, but more real is our faith. More real is the word of God, and he that is from above is above all. The second thing you should do in breaking out is CDA, confess, declare, announce. That's my message, my video on CDA, confess, declare, announce. <laughs> Very powerful. Confess means confession, declaring, announcing. You, if you believe it enough, you will say it. If you believe it enough, you will say it. Loud and clear. I am free. When people are talking around you, ask me to back. You say it boldly. It may affect some people. It cannot affect me. It's not possible. The Bible says Jesus is coming back for his pride. So if there's any spiritual husband at all, it's Jesus. And Jesus is not stopping me from getting married. Car. So you confess what you believe. You declare what you believe. You announce it. Let people know where you stand. When they are praying in the church, every spirit does bad. What should be your prayer point? Thank you, Father, because I can never be affected by any spirit of bad. Every cause in my father's house, I break, break. Father, thank you because I've been set free. I'm not under any cause. Let people know that's what you believe. Say it to yourself. Say it to people. Announce it around you. If anyone says anything that has to do with it around you, let them know your stand. And as you believe, as you say it, the Bible says, as you have said in my ears, so will I do to you. In Jesus' name. So, lastly, if I pray with you, some are Praying vigorously for their marital destiny, yet they are fornicating, yet they are in wrong, com- wrong company, yet they are putting their hands into evil things, yet they are keeping boyfriend and girlfriend, yet they are masturbating, yet they are not stable in God. How? I said your sins have been, have been forgiven, but have you repented? Have you turned back? Are you waging war against that direction, against that sin? 
Make straight your way and your testimony is here in the name of Jesus. Everyone passing through one delay or inside a delay or the other, you are free. 30 days too much. I'm not giving you 30 days to get you anxious or worked up, but 30 days too much. You have been visited by God now and you will see yourself breaking free in the name of Jesus. If you still have issues with things that do it, traditional course of what happened, get my book, Mocking the Devil. Oh my God. <laughs> you will look for the devil to mock. And you are mocking the devil already in your marital life. In Jesus' name. Amen.